Our New Testament reading today is from Colossians 1, and it's just three verses, verses 21 to 23. We're also thinking a little from Isaiah chapter 12, which we'll come to. These are the verses from Colossians. You who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, Jesus has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. We'll come back to that. Think for a moment, though, if you've ever been embarrassingly out of tune in some musical setting. It may have been when you're singing, when you're playing an instrument. I once was playing the guitar um, because they needed a guitar, someone who knew some guitar chords. Um, everyone else was much better musicians. And I was using um, a capo, which is a cheat mechanism for guitarists. And you can stick it on the neck of your guitar so you don't have to play difficult chords and you can play easy ones instead. So I was doing that. And Partway through the song, I realised I had it in the wrong place on the neck of the guitar, and I was horribly out of tune with everybody else, and we were being recorded. So we had to cancel everything and scrub it out and start again. It's very embarrassing. It can be excruciating. But it's lovely when someone takes an out-of-tune instrument and tunes it, and everything comes together with singers and with other instruments and so on. And this is like the change that's going on. At the start of our reading from Isaiah 12, we hear in that day, which is the day we heard in the previous chapter, when God provides a saviour and rescues his people. In that day, you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Wonderful thing. And that leads into a wonderful cartwheeling song of joy. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. It's wonderful. And it's just as clear at the beginning of our Colossians reading, this great change that happens in Isaiah from the Lord's anger to joy in the Lord. In Colossians, we go from this. You're part of this, says Paul. He's been talking about what Jesus has done, and he says, and you, you were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. You're part of this. But there's this great transformation. He has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. What a tremendous movement that is estranged from God, hostile to God in our minds. And yet Jesus comes and on the cross, in his fleshly body through death, he reconciles us to God. That is a tremendous thing. It's a great turning point. Um, you might think for a moment, what are the turning points in your life if you had to specify them? For me, it would include becoming a Christian, getting married. I had a, a very serious bicycle accident all turning points in my life. But the greatest turning point for any Christian happened long before we were born, 2,000 years ago nearly. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to deal with our sin, our estrangement from God. That's the biggest turning point of all. And that's the glorious change at the heart of the gospel. You were once estranged and hostile. He has now reconciled you through his death on the cross. Think about it for a moment. You were once estranged and hostile in mind. We can think, well, was I? Wasn't I just a bit neutral? No, we were estranged. The Bible throughout sees our natural state as being cut off from God because of our sin. You were doing evil deeds, says Paul. Was I? I'm not that evil. But yes, anything which shows we're putting ourselves before God, squeezing him out of the picture, that is an evil deed. And we all do it. In the Bible's viewpoint, sin is like a disease, and there's no herd immunity from it. We all have it, and it is deadly. But that's all turned round 
if we will accept it, by what Jesus has done on the cross and by rising again. His death takes the place of ours. And it is all through God's grace, his love poured out on those who don't deserve it. And that is the turning point, the great retuning, which leads to the second part of Colossians 1.22, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. That's the point of it. That's what he wants. He gives us new life, new freedom, new direction, new hope. Wonderful stuff. We don't suddenly become perfect, never in this life. But because God looks at us and sees Jesus' perfection, we are accepted, healed of the disease of sin, mended of our brokenness, cleaned up and freed from the past. All by what Jesus has done, all as a gift from God, all by his grace. But then so what? We might say if we receive all of this through God's free gift and we can just put our feet up, relax, let him get on with it. But we can't because Paul goes on. God wants you to be holy, blameless, irreproachable, provided that, this is verse 23, you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel you heard. Paul, sure they will, but he thinks it's worth underlining. You need saying you need to, to continue established and steadfast. And these are words used about building a house, making sure it has the right foundations and the right maintenance. Keep it strong. Obviously, Jesus used the same picture. Paul's picked it up from Jesus. Jesus said, hear my words and act on them. Or your house will turn out like a sandcastle when the tide comes in. It'll be knocked flat. So we need to keep sticking at it and living out what God calls us to. It's like keeping in tune, keeping in tune with the music of heaven. We've had the great retuning through the cross, but we need to keep on making sure we don't go out of tune. There are all sorts of ways we could. Continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel. We must constantly and deliberately retune our lives to fit what the great conductor God calls us to. How do we do that? Well, let's go back often to the gospel and remind ourselves of what God has done and what he asks of us. Keep in tune towards God. In Isaiah's terms, it's going often to the wells of salvation to draw living water. The Lord is my strength and my song. From Isaiah 12, he has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Beautiful picture. There are all sorts of practical aids to keep us retuning towards God. Bible notes, devotional aids, all sorts of things. Keep tuning up towards God with prayer and worship and the Lord and the word. And we can keep tuned up towards other people as well. By giving them our love and our forgiveness and sharing our hope with them. Continue securely established and steadfast in the faith. We can do nothing to make God love us more. Remember that, because he has already given us the fullness of his grace. But we can protect and develop our ability to receive that love and grace. His intention is we become holy, blameless, and irreproachable before him. He gave his son to that end. The son gave his life to that end. And our part is to keep in tune with those things and to help one another to do so. So let's keep reminding ourselves of what God intends us to be and of what it cost Jesus to achieve that for us. And let's pray we'll be able to add that to our daily, weekly list of things to give great thanks to God for. Keep in tune with the music of the kingdom and the Lord will be our strength and our glorious song. Amen.